Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's GoFly Master Lecture. I have the distinct pleasure of being with Gwen today, so I'm just going to turn my computer to the side to let her give her introduction. So here's Gwen. Hello, everyone, and welcome to GoFly's Master Lecture with Nick Methven. We are so pleased today to be with you. Uh, Paul and I right now are at AIAA's Aviation Conference in Atlanta, and and we are glad that we are with all of you. As you all know, GoFly's brand sponsor is Boeing, and we are joined by over 20 different aerospace organizations throughout the world, as well as many of our in-kind sponsors, including Global Aerospace. And today we will hear from Nick from Global Aerospace. Nick Bethan joined Global Aerospace in 2002 and currently serves as Senior Vice President and Underwriting Executive. His primary responsibilities include leading Global Aerospace's U.S. Manufacturers Product Liability Underwriting Department and developing underwriting strategies for other product lines. He received his undergraduate degree in aeronautical science from Dowling College in Oakdale, New York, and later earned his MBA in finance from the University of Delaware. Nick holds the Chartered Property Casualty in Underwriter and Certified Aviation Insurance Professional designations. He's also an instrument-rated private pilot. And without further ado, Nick, we're so pleased to welcome you today for GoFly's Master Lecture. Thank Great. you. Great. Th thank you, Gwen. Good afternoon to you and to everybody who's attended. Um, <clears throat> thank you. Thank you very much for taking time to participate in this lecture, um, I want to say congratulations to all of the phase one winners and to all of those that are progressing to phase two. Uh, we're, we're delighted to be part of the mix as the aviation insurance provider supporting the teams as they compete in the next phase. Um, we've had a deep relationship at Global Aerospace, um, a relationship with Boeing for nearly 40 years. And, and we provide coverage to many of its peers and suppliers as well. So in terms of, um, in terms of an agenda for, for today, I uh, just wanted to provide participants with um, kind of a basic uh, insurance introduction, uh, a little bit about global aerospace, and then I wanna talk a little bit about in industry developments. So that will probably comprise the first 15 minutes and then we'll get on to how we're helping teams procure insurance for the competition, um, not only for their own protection, but also to satisfy the requirements put forth by Boeing and GoFly. So if we move on to the, uh, to the, to the next slide here. So let, let's talk about insurance. Um, insurance, a lot of people, well, who actually likes insurance, right? Uh, a lot of people think of it as a necessary evil. It's not necessarily people's favorite subject. Um, we all get those dreaded auto insurance or homeowners insurance bills. In the US, up on the slide, we put a picture of flow from Progressive. We've got an auto insurance card there with some, with some pictures of $100 bills because it always feels like there's, there's a bit of a, more of an outflow uh, in terms of collecting money for claims because I think most people don't have claims. We've got the Geico gecko lizard that everybody's familiar with. And then I put a picture of a, of a fat cat because I think a lot of people have this impression uh, as insurance practitioners as, as fat cats. But, but I do want you to, to remember something that's really important, which is the policy that we've constructed to support the GoFly competition will actually pay for lawyers to represent you if you're sued in the event of a mishap uh, as part of this contest. So, so an important point, certainly wanna make that. Moving along, I'm, I'm gonna profile global aerospace shortly, but I do wanna highlight how we approach insurance. And I think it's important for everyone to know who you're dealing with since, since many of you may not know global aerospace. Um, so we, we partner with our clients, uh, a, high, a high level of engagement. So we have something we call the SM4 Safety Program, uh, which, is, which is our efforts to help uh, elevate safety for, for flight departments, product integrity, helping manufacturer clients with documentation and record keeping practices, integrating emergency response plans into, into claims, family assistance support, 
you know, just talking about family assistance, we do more than write checks around here. Uh, we, we help people get through high stress situations. We put lives back together. We help those recover from tragedies, help businesses get back on their feet so that they can thrive again. That's, that's what makes us tick at, at Global Aerospace. We, we feel like we're part of the industry, We've got a responsibility to the public. We engage the issues and, and we certainly influence where we can. So risk management 101. Um, we, we all take on risk to varying degrees. And, and basically it comes down to how do you, how do you manage your way through, through the risks that we all undertake? And there's a couple of popular techniques that people and companies deploy to handle risk. One is risk control, and then the other one is risk finance. Risk control could be avoiding the, the, the activity altogether, uh, deploying certain loss prevention and reduction techniques. And then there's the risk finance side, which is, which is trying to transfer contractually risk away from a business, maybe taking on some of the risk, and then transferring some of the risk financially. And it's the risk transfer piece where people use insurance. Um, and that's essentially what a lot of our clients do. They may take on a little bit of risk themselves, but generally speaking, they transfer the bulk of the exposures to insurance companies like Global Aerospace. And in terms of underwriting, so what does that mean? What do we, what do, we do? Um, <clears throat> we, we assess risk. So some perils that we look at would be things like pilots, pilot qualifications, uh, pilots making mistakes, equipment failures, uh, and then some natural uh, occurring perils like fire and lightning. And we also look at hazards, which would be poor procedures or training, uh, operating environment. What, what's not on the slide is maybe a weak or poisonous or unhealthy culture. That would be another hazard that, that we would contemplate. And then the basic principle of insurance is charging enough from the masses to pay the unfortunate losses of the fuel uh, of the few, I should say. And to make insurance from a business perspective work, you have to scale it. Scale, scale, scale. That's really important in our business. And it's an important ingredient for, for success as an insurance provider. So moving on to risk characteristics. So just looking at individual risks themselves, we look at the people, crew qualifications, management personnel, training, that's probably the most paramount, paramount consideration in the underwriting process is the people that are involved in a particular operation. We look at the equipment, how an aircraft is used. And when I, when I talk about aircraft, I mean it in the traditional sense, but we also include things like drones, even personal flying devices that are certainly the subject of this competition, flying cars. We sort of lump all those in with, with this broad uh, statement or broad moniker uh, of aircraft. We look at the infrastructure, uh, air, airspace system, where you're using the aircraft, and then finally a little bit about the financial background or the financial backing of, of companies and, and individuals that, that we underwrite. <clears throat> so I just want to get into a little bit of a corporate overview on global aerospace because like I said it's important for you to know who you're dealing with for those that are not familiar with global. Um, <clears throat> for almost a century, uh, industry leaders have chosen Global Aerospace as their insurance provider for some of the attributes that are described on the slide, which I'm, which I'm not necessarily going to read. Uh, I would suggest that you think of us as a boutique specialty insurance provider uh, focused exclusively on aviation-related risks. That's all that we do. It's got to be aviation-related. We have a very significant market share uh, around the world, and, and I would say that we have one of the largest aviation insurance portfolios uh, in, in the world. So just a little bit about global there. And then in terms of who backs global aerospace, um, they, they, you see five companies up at the top of this slide. Uh, USA, that's National Indemnity, which is a Berkshire Hathaway company. Uh, Munich Re in Germany, Tokyo Marine in Japan, as well as Mitsui in Japan, in Japan and then Mapfre in Spain. So every policy that we issue is backed by these five companies, each of whom takes 
a share of the risk. These are really strong insurance companies, uh, arguably the strongest or among the strongest in the world. And, and they're backing every single policy that we have that resonates well with, with our policyholder base. Highly rated by the, by the financial rating agency, Standard & Poor's, AM Best. And I guess for GoFly and for GoFly participants, this is meaningful because if you have a claim, uh, you can have a great deal of confidence in our ability to pay and, and fund a claim on your behalf. And we talk about the global, the global aerospace difference. Again, this is another slide that I don't necessarily want to read, but I do want to focus on a couple of key themes, which would be empowerment, um, a flat structure, and, and multinational capabilities. Uh, all of us at Global Aerospace, particularly in the underwriting and the claims departments, have high levels of authority. Um, you have access to decision makers because because of the, as a function of that flat structure, and we can provide solutions in, in most areas of the world. And just some statistics here, a uh, quick peek at kind of what I'll call market share. 50% uh, of the world's aerospace manufacturers, so you think of the Boeings of the world, um, leading 20% of the world's airlines, uh, not just here in the United States, but around the world. We've probably, although it's not on the slide, probably a 30% market share uh, for Fortune 500 flight departments, protecting uh, business jet assets and ensuring about 30,000 general aviation aircraft around the world. So just a little bit more of a feel for, for who we are at Global Aerospace. We've got worldwide footprint, sort of back to that multinational uh, comment that I made. We've got the geographical scope to, to help clients place insurance in jurisdictions uh, around the world. And perhaps more importantly, we have the ability to respond to a claim anywhere in the world. And this is an important slide, and, and I can't emphasize it enough. Um, <clears throat> this is what you. This is ultimately what you get when you when you buy a policy at Global Aerospace. You get our claims team, who are renowned in the business, and we do a lot to collaborate with our clients. We're focused on brands. We're focused on getting clients uh, to recover from a mishap or an event and get them back to their core business. We've got over 46 uh, experienced claims professionals. May not, may not sound like a big number in absolute terms, but the bulk of those are seasoned professionals, many of whom are attorneys to manage litigation on behalf of our clients. They come from diverse backgrounds. As I said earlier, they're empowered and a close link with underwriting. So underwriting and claims are very joined up um, to make sure that we're satisfying client needs. And I should add too that we, we have a reputation uh, for being very proactive uh, in terms of resolving claims on behalf of clients. We don't let them sort of sit around and fester. We are all about resolving claims to the satisfaction of our clients. And then I'm getting ready to sort of shift gears into the industry, but just to close out about global, this is a little bit about the SM4 program that I referenced earlier. And this is essentially helping clients with the planning, response, uh, prevention, recovery, these are safety management uh, issues that, that flight departments have to contemplate. And we've spent over $4 million to help elevate safety in our industry uh, just in the past seven or eight years. And here's just a sampling of some of the partners that we've, uh, that we've aligned with within the SM4 program. So we deploy these experts on behalf of our clients. And there's expertise in human factors, fatigue management, uh, emergency response planning, just, just to name a few. So now I want to shift gears and talk a little bit about industry development so that you have perhaps maybe just sort of a better feel in terms of what's happening in our industry with, with a look at it from, from an insurance perspective. If we look at airlines and fatality rates <clears throat> over the last 20 years or so, we've seen what all, what all categorize as a precipitous decline in the number of fatalities or fatal events that we see around the world. This is, uh, so our actuarial team has put together this slide and, they, and they've used a five-year rolling average. But just to put this in plain terms, um, in, in 1998, there was one fatality uh, for every 18 million passengers. Um, 
in 2017, that number is now one, there's one fatal event for every 110 million passengers flown. So a market increase uh, in safety. And I should also point out that in insurance premiums, aviation insurance premiums have followed this downward slope uh, for, for, this, for this time period. So what are some of the things we're looking at from an insurance perspective is, and, and this is not just us, it's, 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 the, uh, it's the federal agencies, governmental authorities, aviation authorities, everybody in, with an interest in, 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 in the space uh, dealing with airspace integration. So this is, this is something that's on our minds at Global Aerospace. As I said earlier, there's fewer catastrophic losses in our business. But there are some things that worry about us, uh, worry us, and it's airspace integration. It's maybe easier access to the aviation environment. We think about drones. We think about personal flying devices. There's some concerns in the sense that users won't be licensed like they were perhaps in the past. Um, didn't go through the traditional licensing process, build up certain flight hours, get through certain thresholds in terms of pilot certifications. Does that compromise safety at some point along the way? We don't know the answer to that question. We'll, we'll work our way through it. Um, you know, just anecdotally, an example that I can share with you is that just this week I was in Silicon Valley meeting with a client who uh, they're basically building a flying car and they say it takes about two hours to train a person off the street to operate this vehicle. So I'm thinking that the quality of sleep that I get each night is going to be diminished here for some time as we, as we figure out how that's going to manifest itself by way of claims. But uh, having said that, I do think technology has, has made uh, operating these machines uh, a lot easier. And, and hopefully it is as easy as just training somebody for a couple of hours. Uh, but again, something that we're a little bit worried about as an insurance provider. And then a couple more things. We're saying that the, the airline events, airline fatalities, catastrophic events, that's what we refer to them in the business, they're down. They're down significantly, but we're seeing different claim patterns in our business. Um, so one example that I put in here is what we call grounding events. And that's basically paying for loss of use or business interruption for aircraft operators when a particular model of aircraft is deemed uh, unairworthy by an aviation authority for, for somewhere around the world. So I put a picture of a 777 here, um, an Airbus A321, and then a Super Puma helicopter. All three have been involved in, in uh, grounding events in, in the last 18 months or so. And, and this is emerging technology. So, so the 787, for example, um, and I'm, is, is using Rolls-Royce engines. There have been some difficulties with the blades on those engines. The, the uh, A321 is being powered by Pratt & Whitney, the geared turbofan engine. Some new emerging technology that's actually in the stream of commerce now, seeing some teething issues with it. So that's manifesting itself as claims. Airbus, um, the Super Puma, that was grounded for a long period of time after a mishap in Norway. So just a new, a new flavor of claims for us. And these events together have cost the industry uh, hundreds of millions of dollars in, in losses. So just wanted to share that with you. And then finally, just some adverse jury verdicts and legal settlements in the past 12 months. And these weren't large scale events. Uh, they involve very few people. Granted, these people suffered life altering injuries. So very sympathetic from, from a hum humanity perspective. But the trend is a little worrisome to the insurance community because we look, look at what's on the slide, cargo airline crash, $137 million for four individuals whose lives were lost. Uh, a large U.S. airport in the Midwest, uh, there was a temporary building collapse, severely injured a single passenger, $118 million. Helicopter crash burn victim, that was a single person who had bad injuries, $100 million, and then a couple people who were hurt. While in their cars, as a helicopter crashed down on them, $40 million claim. So um, some significant developments in that, in that regard, because those are, those are a higher quantum than we're accustomed to seeing for, for, for typically um, either fatalities or, or a, a bad bodily injury case. What's not on the slide is something that we refer to as PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder. We've seen a surge in those claims. We think that the plaintiff's bar 
um, is pursuing these claims with a bit more vigor because there's been a dearth of traditional catastrophic claims. I think it also is related to the fact that aircraft are more survivable um, and there's maybe better technology to anticipate problems on an airplane. Think about some of the abortive, take, abortive takeoffs that we've seen. So the one in Las Vegas from a few years ago, or I think it was British Airways. We had American Airlines in Chicago a couple of years ago. These were passengers that got off of the airplane, that, which was on fire. Uh, and they're, and they're, they're traumatized. Uh, they're impacted by that event. Southwest 1380, that's another one where we anticipate seeing post-traumatic stress disorder claims for what people will allege uh, emotional, psychological trauma as a function of being aboard that flight while they had that decompression and, and that poor woman who was, um, who was fatally injured um, while they were dealing with that situation and had to make an emergency descent. We'll see some PTSD claims. Again, that's just giving you a feel for what's happening in the industry. <clears throat> now I want to talk about GoFly and the insurance requirements and how we can help teams uh, comply with these. And I just say, well, if we're looking to look forward and look forward to the innovation and some of the things that we've seen the teams put together in phase one, which is really impressive, um, maybe we should take a moment, look back, thinking about um, Henry Ford, uh, an engineer back in the day, you know, horse and buggy, and we went to cars for personal transportation. And I think maybe the participants in the Glo Go Fly competition will be uh, heavy influencers on, on where we go from here as it relates to transportation. So anyway, just thought it'd be interesting to, uh, to see what Henry Ford had to say back in the day. And now let's talk about specifics with regard to GoFly insurance requirements. Um, and I, and I, I want to read through this quickly. Um, this is an excerpt from, from an agreement that uh, team members will, will be signing as they go into phase two. Uh, and essentially, uh, this is, if we start with general liability and aircraft liability insurance, uh, within 30 days of the effective date, team shall be covered and shall arrange for coverage, and I'm just going to paraphrase, general liability covering premises operations, bodily injury, property damage to third parties, uh, personal injury element in there as well for a million dollars per occurrence or $2 million in the aggregate. So that's the, what we call the general liability component. And then paragraph B is the aircraft liability component. So any team engaged in flight activity will have to procure a million dollars in aircraft liability insurance. Paragraph C and D are some technicalities. Paragraph C says that GoFly and Boeing will have insured status under team policies as it relates to um, Boeing and GoFly's involvement in, in the competition. And then paragraph D is basically saying that you have to provide documentation that you've complied with these requirements. So I want to I want to emphasize something here, which is that you some of you will likely need two policies to comply with this requirement. Uh, some teams may already have part of this requirement already complied with. If we go back to paragraph A, the general liability piece. Uh, some teams may already have that. It's probably not likely that the teams have aircraft liability insurance, which is why GoFly and Boeing approached us. Uh, but I just want to, I want to make that distinction. Uh, and, and if you don't have general liability insurance right now as a team, we, we can help, but it's also pretty easy to procure that in, in the standard property and casualty uh, marketplace. Uh, we certainly can help you out with that. Um, and we are covering certain aspects of general liability and personal injury within your aircraft liability policy. This gets into some technicalities with regard to insurance, but there's sort of this line of demarcation in the business where it's either aviation exposures or it's non-aviation exposures. So anything to do with a personal flying device or, or aircraft, uh, traditional property and casualty underwriters don't want anything to do with that. So they will avoid it and they'll put exclusions in the policy. So we are picking up elements of general liability and personal injury as it relates to your operation of your personal flying device as you build it, test fly it, um, whatever you're gonna do with it. We are making some uh, provisions for, for those coverages within the aircraft liability policy. Um, I'll talk more about this as we, as we finish up the presentation. The next requirement, um, and this again is an excerpt from, from an agreement, 
um, is is the uh, the obligation for teams to arrange for workers' compensation insurance. This is particularly relevant in the U.S. for teams that are not in the U.S. in different countries. Uh, you'll have to do you, you'll have to um, comply with this to the extent that your local laws um, have provisions for it. Um, this probably represents a third policy that team members will have to procure. And, and, I, and again, like, like the general liability that team members may already have in place, uh, teams might have workers' compensation in place already too. If not, we, we certainly can help. We might be able to write the workers' comp ourselves um, to support or as a function of supporting this contest. You, you may want to consider workers' compensation that's underwritten by another company that co not only picks up your aviation exposures, but perhaps non-aviation exposures that you might have as a team. Um, we, something that we can talk about um, perhaps in the Q&A session. Um, I would add that we are going to provide some contact information to help you uh, after this lecture uh, for those that have uh, lingering questions about how to, how to procure general liability and workers' comp in particular, because I'm going to talk about the aircraft liability. That one is covered for sure. So let's just keep moving on. Um, this, this, is another, this is another requirement that you'll have to satisfy spelling out baseline financial strength uh, from, from the insurance providers that, that you might use to comply with these requirements. I don't think this will be problematic for any of the teams. And certainly the policy that we're issuing to, to cover your aircraft liability exceeds the financial strength called for in, in section 8.4 here up on the slide. Here, another 8.6 insurance certificate. This is essentially, again, you're going to have to provide documentation that shows that you've satisfied the insurance requirements set forth in, in the master agreement. And, and you're gonna to have to produce that documentation. Your insurance broker or advisor will help you do that. We can help you do that at Global Aerospace as well. So just wanted to highlight this as, as an obligation. And then just getting into more particulars about what, what's, what's covered. So I'm gonna, um, I'm focused now on the Global Aerospace aircraft policy that we've put together to support team members and, and participants. So who is covered? Who is covered in this aircraft liability? Remember aircraft, we use the term, uh, it's a moniker to apply to drones and personal flying devices. The aircraft policy, it covers the team, it covers the team's employees, as well as any person using the aircraft with permission from the team. There are some exceptions to this. So if you, for example, were to hire a flying service or, or, or a professional pilot service to do some of your flight testing, uh, those individuals or those companies would not be covered under this policy. So just something to be thinking about. Also employees for injury or death to another employee, that's, that's generally referred to um, loosely as a workers' comp uh, or a fellow employee exclusion. Generally thinking is, is that most states in the U.S. will bar suit uh, from one employee against another. Workers' comp or employer's liability uh, will protect for, for that for, for that occurrence or event. And um, one other important point that I think I should make at this stage, is, which is, as I said earlier, the policy will pay for lawyers to represent you if you're sued, uh, if there's a mishap uh, as a function of your involvement with this, with this competition. Legal representation expenses are provided by the policy. It's in addition to the limit of liability. So we've structured a million dollar policy. So it's a million dollars of protection for the teams. The defense costs, the legal representation, the lawyers, that expense is actually in addition to the million dollars of liability coverage that we're providing to the teams. So just want to make that distinction. So specifically, what, what is covered in the aircraft liability as opposed to who's covered? It's, it's bodily injury to and property damage. So I look at the first two bullet points, bodily injury, property damage to, to people and, and property on the ground. Um, acts of terrorism. So it's far fetched to imagine a scenario, but if somebody were to commandeer your vehicle and use it for nefarious purposes, um, you're going to have some terrorism coverage in the policy to protect you. We've got a premises coverage extension. So that gets back to my line of demarcation about aviation and non-aviation. Uh, we're carrying out premises coverage. So if you have a standard general liability policy, it will exclude premises coverage 
uh, on airport premises. So we've scheduled in some airport premises coverage into your policy to allow uh, for coverage to kick in if you're out flight testing your vehicle and you're on airport premises. We've actually scheduled the coverage so that even if you're not on an airport premises and you're testing the vehicle, uh, be it a farm field or a parking lot, uh, we'll, we'll cover you there as well. Um, and then personal injury. So think of things like libel, slander, false arrest, detention. Uh, these are offenses that must arise out of the ownership, maintenance, or use of, of the aircraft, but that will be covered. It's pretty topical for us right now in our business, particularly as it relates to invasion of privacy. Um, and in the drone world in particular, this is uh, a bit concerning to us because we just worry about the proliferation of drones flying over public places like beaches and outdoor concerts and things of, of, of that nature. You know, we could see a flurry of invasion of privacy claims triggered. So it's just something that we're watching closely in, in, in our business. We put some coverage to protect you guys as part of the competition. And then let's talk a little bit about what's not covered so that you are fully aware. Uh, common policy exclusions, Workers' compensation, employers' liability, those are generally two things that are, are, that are um, kind of thought of together, workers' comp and employers' liability. There's a specific policy for those. That's why we exclude it in our policy. It's a common, common practice in the insurance business. Nuclear risks are excluded, radioactive contamination, trade or economic sanctions. So we can't pay claims if you are um, subject in a certain jurisdiction to, to US or UN sanctions. We're, for, we're forbidden by law to pay claims on behalf of clients in those areas. So you'll see an exclusion related to that. Pollution, that's a common exclusion that you'll see in the industry. And then passenger and, and occupant. So I, I do wanna emphasize this so that everybody's fully aware we, we are not able to provide bodily injury coverage to occupants or passengers of the personal flying devices. It would be uh, commercially probably not feasible to do that, uh, given the fact that these are what I'll call experimental vehicles. There's a great deal of risk associated with it, and, and people take on the risk of, of perhaps being injured, worse killed. Um, so we can't cover the bodily injury there, but we do think there's some other remedies like life insurance, health insurance if somebody gets hurt, uh, workers' compensation, same thing. And there's even personal accident policies that can be purchased. They're not necessarily cheap, but they can be purchased uh, for things like this. So it may be something that, that teams want to contemplate. When I refer to bodily injury, I'm, I'm referring to it in the sense, uh, in terms of it, it, it's, it means what it says, bodily injury, but it also includes death. And that's specific policy language. And then the coverage territory. So coverage for the teams applies anywhere in the world. I don't want that to be confused with some country specific insurance requirements that we cannot get around, unfortunately. So I know some teams are from different parts of the world, places like Australia, Canada, Switzerland, Mexico, India, that's just to name a few. You must have locally procured insurance based on country imposed insurance regulations. That's not us doing it. That's local countries or specific countries, I should say, uh, imposing their own regulations around insurance. So if you're, in, if you're residing in one of those areas, we are happy to provide you with some referrals based on the network that we have around the world uh, of insurance brokers that we, that we work with. And you can contact, contact us at gofly at globalarrow.com. That's gonna be our sort of our universal email address that we use to support teams uh, as you progress into the into the next phase of the competition. And then some other business considerations uh, from an insurance perspective for the teams, workers comp, general liability, we've talked about those, you might wanna consider business property and contents. So if you've got some, some tools or some tooling um, and, and, and other what I'll call property uh, or physical assets to support the development of your personal flying device, you might wanna consider some coverage there commercial automobile liability, if the teams have, have uh, bought or rented some cars to use in support of the team, directors and officers for maybe some of the senior level people at the teams. So I know some teams may have these coverages in place, but just wanted to share that with you as things, as you form your company 
and, and progress here, these are things that you might want to contemplate from a, from a risk management perspective to make sure that you're properly covered uh, as, as a team. Email us at GoFly if, if you need any assistance in this area. And then I just put a picture here of the, of the policy. This is, again, this is the aircraft policy that we've created for, for the teams. And also a, sort of a picture of the application that we're gonna ask teams to fill out so that we can just do a basic assessment of, of your risk profile. Uh, what you may not see, I'm not sure if it's clear to people that are, that are looking at these slides, but the premium for the aircraft liability policy is going to be $1,500 per policy. That's for a million dollars of coverage. There may be additional surcharges depending on what state you reside in. There's state taxes. Sometimes there's insurance premium taxes. If you're in a country where we can write the insurance legally, there still may be insurance premium taxes as a function of you using uh, what I'll call an offshore insurance provider um, or, or somebody that's maybe not locally domiciled in, in that particular country. Uh, but I don't think any of those fees will be more than a couple hundred dollars or a few hundred dollars per policy. So I, I don't think it's going to, I mean, that's money, but it's, I don't think it's going to move the needle in, in terms of what you can expect for, from a total spend for the aircraft liability policy. And then we're just, uh, we're wrapping up folks. Um, what to do next. So we'd like for you to, to complete the, the GoFly insurance application and maybe Gwen can speak to this when I, when I conclude. I do think that that application will be made available on, on the website uh, and we're certainly happy to send it to you as well. Um, send the completed application or, or send any inquiries to the GoFly address that you see there. Consult with your brokers or insurance advisors if you have those in place already. We don't want to take we don't want to take the place of them or substitute for them. Uh, they, they'll probably have their own advice in terms of how you how you contemplate things here. Um, I, I should say too, when we at the outset of this, we thought, okay, so the teams the teams are going to need general liability insurance, the teams are going to need workers comp, and the teams are going to need aircraft liability. In our original thinking, we 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 said, well, the probably the most challenging thing for them will be the aircraft liability insurance. So let's structure something to make sure that the teams can fulfill that requirement. And then as time has gone on, we think a little bit more about workers' comp and general liability and thinking, just not sure of the team composition and, and, and how robust existing insurance programs may be in place for teams or, or maybe they're not in place. So that's why I put that last bullet in this slide, which is contact me with any concerns as it relates to general liability, workers' comp or anything else for that matter. I've got my phone number there, my personal, uh, email address. It's the company email address. It's not the GoFly at Global. It's it's my first initial last name. You can email me at any point in time. Happy to help you uh, as you progress through this through this competition. I know insurance is probably not something that people really want to focus a lot on. You guys probably have bigger things to be doing. Um, we want to do our part to help facilitate uh, your success, and and we stand ready to do that. And at this stage, uh, I'll open it up for some Q&A. Uh, I wanna thank everybody for, for your attention. Uh, hopefully that was not uh, too mundane uh, and apologies that it wasn't some high level technical brief trying to figure out how to solve some uh, engineering problem. It was insurance related, but, um, but it's stuff that you probably have to deal with and uh, you definitely have to deal with it as a function of this competition. And, and we'll look forward to supporting teams as, as you go through that. Great, thanks so much, Nick. Um, we've got uh, just a couple of questions. Um, first, uh, just to, to clarify and reiterate, um, the uh, $1,500 policy that you mentioned, that covers um, just the, the aircraft, right? Correct. And then um, the other types of insurance that you mentioned uh, need to be procured separately outside of that $1,500 policy. That's right. And, and just from, a, you know, I, I don't want anybody to hold me to this, but just doing some benchmarking, um, you know, I don't think, I think a general liability policy, um, if, if, you know, I, I, think, I think a team might want to contemplate a general liability policy, particularly if you rented some office space that covers people that slip and fall, that come into your office. And, you know, a traditional general liability policy in the standard market might run anywhere from three, five, seven hundred dollars per year. It may vary depending on where the building is located um, 
and there's other factors that have to be considered. Workers' compensation for a small team of just a couple of people, two or three people, that spend, I think, would be less than $1,000. But again, a lot of it depends on the composition of the team. It depends on how many people, what kind of infrastructure is in place, what kind of, what kind of building exposures they may present, if they have some manufacturing facilities. So just some, some stuff we'd work through on the underwriting process, Paul. But, but I'm pretty confident that hopefully none of this would break, break any team's budget so to speak. Great. And then um, the, the $1,500 policy, again, um, that sort of represents uh, the minimum coverage for, for the GoFly. Uh, is there anything to think about uh, or the potential for teams maybe wanting to go above and beyond that minimum insurance requirement? So we, we haven't really contemplated higher limits, Paul. Um, I wouldn't rule it out. We would consider that on a case-by-case -case basis. That, that's something people should contact you about if they have questions yes. about it. And, and in fact, if when they submit their application, if they're interested in higher limits, they could perhaps note that in the narrative that they, maybe in a short narrative on the email. Great, and then um, I'm just gonna pass uh, the, the screen over to Gwen here to say a couple of words about um, uh, the GoFly phase two process and uh, how to get involved in this process overall. Great. Hello everyone, thank you very much, Nick. I'm, I'm Truly appreciate the, the insight and the expertise, and I know certainly our, our innovators do as well. Uh, just to be clear, as we are discussing uh, insurance and the phase two process, to begin the phase two onboarding process, email us at phase two at goflyprize.com. We've sent flowcharts out to all innovators in our community detailing the process, including the master team agreement and the media rights agreement and the company questionnaire and participant equity agreement. So we have a flow for that. Um, then once you have been officially accepted as a phase two team, that is the point when you should procure insurance and uh, Nick has provided those uh, forms and we can certainly uh, get them online for you as well and you have Nick's um, email to be able to work with him on uh, procuring the the exact insurance that you need. Um, we certainly want to thank Global Aerospace for developing a pool of insurance for our innovators. Um, this, we believe, will be a great service to our innovators. And of course, you are free to choose to um, provide for your insurance needs in a number of different ways, um, as long as you meet the requirements in the master team agreement. Um, and so I just wanted you all to know about that phase two process so that we're, we're very clear there. Um, Nick, what other um, comments, considerations do you think that uh, uh, our innovators should know about? You were incredibly thorough. I just don't know if there's anything else that you'd like to add. I, I don't think so, Gwen, other than to say that we look forward to receiving applications and, and correspondence from the teams as they, as they work through meeting the requirements in the master team agreement. And um, yeah, we, we stand ready to assist. So th thank you. Thank you very much and thank you all. We have a number of upcoming master lectures uh, planned for the next couple of weeks uh, and uh, we have some technical lectures. We also have many lectures geared towards uh, onboarding for phase two, how to protect your intellectual property, uh, how to set up your corporate entity. Uh, and so should you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to us at phase two at goflyprize.com. We appreciate it and thank you all so very much. Thanks, Gwen.